Assalamu alaikum ji, uh, good afternoon. Um, and uh, thank you, Azasa, once again for partnering with us to, to make this happen. I'll be very brief uh, and want to make three or four points uh, largely for our uh, guests uh, who are here uh, to listen to this from the international community. Um, let me just begin by reflecting on what has been said, which is an impossible act to follow, uh, a personal story. But there's a fundamental problem with which I deal every day sitting in my office. Uh, because I look at a country um, where my prime minister's instructions are to focus on economic security, to focus on welfare, to focus on connectivity, with a central pillar of his vision being regional peace. That's the task I've been handed. And then I look across my eastern border and find a country that's gone from bad to worse, a country that's become more and more intolerant, that celebrates uh, vigilantism, and has been approaching uh, the illegally occupied territory of Kashmir the way uh, the two speakers before me have spoken. With this difference in mind, the toolkit that Pakistan works with to effect change in policy and to achieve the ultimate objective is very limited. What is the ultimate objective? Two, number one, and the ultimate sort of goal is peace. Even today, despite everything else, what we look at is how to achieve peace in the region. Because without peace, we can't fulfill our economic dream and our economic security paradigm uh, remains half-baked. But to get to that peace, the world has already told us the manner in which the Kashmir dispute has to be resolved. I haven't come up with that, Pakistan hasn't come up with that, nor does India. It is enshrined in the UN Security Council resolutions, decided by the United Nations, on a plea taken by India. We know exactly what we need to do. And there's no movement on that. If there's no movement on that, I'm afraid this whole idea of regional peace is basically words that increasingly, um, at least if I speak for myself, I feel the world is not serious about. So then I raise the next question. The champions of human rights don't seem to care about Kashmiri lives. The champions of regional stability, which is crucial if you want nearly two billion people to find a way to prosper, don't seem to link the outstanding dispute of Kashmir and what is happening in illegally occupied Kashmir with the need for peace. And if you leave everything aside, people who talk about strategic stability at the highest level, we're talking of a nuclear region, does not seem to matter. What seems to matter are short-term mercantilist interests. What seems to matter is a myth that our eastern neighbor can do the bidding of some of the countries who want um, to hold back another rising power. Whatever it may be, I think my job here would be to implore the international community. Don't do it for Pakistan. Don't look at Pakistan's stance. Definitely don't look at real estate and territory if that's where you can't go. Simply look at the fact that millions of human lives are being treated as animals in illegally occupied Kashmir. And if, ladies and gentlemen, anybody feels that with that attitude, this region can be stable, peace can come to this region, and even for those investors who are looking at this region as a lucrative market, you can have a real economic activity. It's not going to happen. So it defies logic that the world remains silent on this um, outstanding, longest outstanding dispute as far as the UN is concerned. Let me just say two things at the end. 
peace remains Pakistan's preference. We've worked towards it. The Pakistani Prime Minister said when he took office, if India takes one step, we'll take two. Unfortunately, India's take, taken many, many steps just in the opposite direction. Even today, if there is seriousness as about resolving this dispute, we know what international law says about it. Come to terms with that fact, sit down and resolve the problem, and this region can move forward. But our offer of peace cannot be seen as a weakness. Pakistan has stood by the Kashmir cause in Kashmiris for 73 years. It will continue to do that. But if we want to really move forward, then the enabling environment has to be created by our neighbor, not us. It's the neighbor that has taken uh, this relationship to where it is and the environment in occupied Kashmir uh, where it is. That has to change before anything can move forward. I, we can't sit here, keep putting out dossiers for the world to look at, where in gory details of terrorism being perpetrated against Pakistan have been presented. And we just pretend that it hasn't happened. So the enabling environment has to come from the opposite side, and you will find uh, Pakistan willing and more than willing. And finally, let me just end by saluting every single Kashmiri that has been fighting for this cause and the Kashmiri resistance that has been there for 73 years and will continue to the day, we are sure, without a doubt, till the right to self-determination is given. Thank you very much.